Hi Scorpio, welcome to Higher Source Tarot for your March 2021 mid-month tarot reading. This is for all Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. And if you are new to the channel, I post new readings every Friday and then again on Monday or Tuesday. So if a reading doesn't resonate, you can always check back in a couple of days. You could watch a reading from a different part of your chart, or you could even watch an older reading. Uh, tarot sacred, sacred Divination, so the readings are timeless. And thanks to everybody for all that you've done for the channel, from watching readings to hitting that like button, and of course subscribing. I really do appreciate you, and um, it means a lot to me. So we will continue to continue. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I'd like to invite you to join us and become a subscriber. Then you'll know when anything new is posted on the channel. So let's begin and get the guidance for Scorpio. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What does Scorpio need to know, please? What messages do you have for Scorpio? We'll begin with the tarot, and then we will use the angel answers. And we're going to throw in a message from Louise Hay today also. Current situation, you've got the Seven of Wands. The immediate influence is the Two of Pentacles. Now your destiny, you've got the Five of Wands. The distant past, you have the Ace of Swords. The more recent past, you have the Wheel of Fortune. The energy coming towards you is interesting. You've got the Four of Cups. You're represented by the Hanged Man. The person or situation around you is the High Priestess. You have the Page of Swords here in your hopes and fears, but the King of Pentacles and the outcome. Now, this is kind of cool. On the bottom, I could have kept pulling cards, but you know I don't do that. Your clarifiers here are the World and the Ten of Cups. So I feel like they are really trying to strongly encourage you to, to really look around you in appreciation because you have money coming in, and I think you have the potential for love or you have something that hasn't been moving along here. Um... But there's a lot of potential. It's just a matter of activating it. So the world is a card of self-mastery. It's nirvana. It's liberation. I mean, it really is a, a card of feeling amazing, of feeling like you are literally on top of the world and living a life without limits. It's one of the best cards, I think, in the deck. I mean, who doesn't want to see that? And it's all about a new cycle. So you've got the Ten of Cups here, again, which is a card of family of celebration of feeling fulfilled and so if you're in a place where you're just uncertain or you're feeling like you're not getting what you want out of life i'll just be blunt um they're telling you it's all about that appreciation and it's looking around you and recognizing your power around you in the world that you've created because Everything around you is a manifestation of what's inside of you. So if you're in a place where you're feeling kind of stuck or stumped or like, I don't understand why this isn't working, whatever it is, um, knowing that and asking questions like, what do I need to become to have this? What do I need to change to do this or to be this? To be this is probably the best way to say, say that because they're trying to guide you and tell you that it's available. Um, so I really like to see those in this kind of a reading because with the seven of wands, this is a card of alignment. You're not giving up, you know, but I do feel like they're also telling you to lighten up a little bit, especially if it's been something that just has not been moving forward. You have here, before we get into this too far, you've got um, Earth, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. You've got Air, uh, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, you've got Fire, Aries, Leo, Sag, and you do have Water, okay, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. So with this, the Seven of Wands is about being in alignment. So there may be some problems. You're going to have choices to make, but you're in alignment. So when you are in alignment, you will, you'll have the choices readily available. So even when you listen to like Abraham Hicks and they talk about, they still have problems. They still have Esther has planes that are delayed, but then the solution seems to show up mysteriously, but not really, out of nowhere. Now, I had somebody leave a comment once about, um, I was talking about people being in alignment, not catching a struggle and not making, you can't make a bad choice when you're in alignment. And this person made a very odd comment about rapists and murderers. 
they're not in alignment, people. Like if that's what you think, that's not somebody who's, they're completely out of alignment. So that's not what we're talking about. You're, you're not in the, tr in the same energy field as a rapist or a murderer here, which I sometimes I shake my heads at the comments. I think, my God, I can't even imagine living like that with, if that's really how they see the world. But anyway, so you've got the Two of Pentacles. The Two of Pentacles, you, you know, be aware that he's juggling those pentacles within that infinity symbol. Okay, so you've got abundance here available to you. And it may be very good choices. And it, it part of this may just be um, having choices and being uncertain because you're wanting to make choices that bring in abundance. Um, but the Two of Pentacles too can be a bit of a busy energy. And I do feel that overall for you. You've got a lot of movement and sort of busyness coming in. And I feel like down here when we talk about the, the hangman and the high priestess about why those are here, um, I think they're important cards in this reading. So with this five of wands being in your destiny position, it, it it's attracting some sort of chaotic energies around you. So if you're somebody that kind of likes to be in the mix, there might be a part of you that would benefit from balancing that out a little bit. Because the five of wands is kind of an immature energy too. So you may find that you've been in a lot of drama in your life. It's a change card. And so for some of you, you may say as you move through life, drama is not very attractive to you. And it's all about changing that and moving away from some of that energy field. Even if people, there are people in your life who seem to almost depend on you because they're dramatic. And so they're always looking to you to, oh my God, you'll never believe this. You know, you may find that you start to distance yourself from that because you're still in this place of I, what am I becoming and what is that creating in my life, right? And so we don't want to become this. We're moving away from this. So in the distant past, you've got this Ace of Swords and it's all about a new chapter, a new goal. And so with this, you may have been very focused on something, laser focused on this goal. And it's a, it's a, a goal that you stick to. So if it's body, if it's, if it's the physical body and you made a decision at the new year, I'm going to cut out some things. I'm seeing fried food and like Coke and stuff. If, and I mean, Coca-Cola, not cocaine, but I mean, it could be that too, because that's not healthy either, right? I'm not a doctor or a nutritionist, but I think we all know drugs are not, um, recreational drugs are not typically that healthy for you. So anyway, um, with this, it is about, hey, I'm making a decision here. I've got a plan sticking to it. And I do feel like for somebody here, your physical body has really evolved in a very positive way. Um, if it was like a new endeavor, like a new business or something, that also is about sticking to it and there's money here. So if it was something work related, the money's showing up at the end as we get to that King of Pentac Pentacles here. So this is a very good thing to have here. Now the Wheel of Fortune, again, turns in your favor. In the more recent past, things may have started to move forward. And I do feel like it's bringing in opportunities for you. And that's kind of what's creating that some somewhat of an indecisive response or an uncertain response. Um, high vibrational stuff, though. This is you lifting your vibration. And really with this, again, I get this sense of somebody really cleaning up that physical body and feeling good, feeling physically very good. And that lifts the vibration and it brings in more. It attracts more. And so you may have met somebody too here that's got a lot of potential in a love relationship. Um, but I do feel like maybe they live far away or there's some distance or some obstacle between the two of you that has created a little bit of resistance here. So with the Wheel of Fortune, it's a card of travel. It's a fortunate card. Some would say luck, but it's really about you being in alignment. And that's threaded or embedded throughout this reading about you investing in your own alignment to source and it shows up all over the place. So the four of cups here is in the near future. Again, it's like kind of really honestly being bored with the choices, um, not wanting to, to make a choice. And so some of you may be in this waiting thing where you're waiting for more opportunities. But again, you've got choices here. And so if it's something to do financially, you may be stalling or it's dragging your feet a little bit and saying, well, I, I want to see really, I want to see a little more here. And so the only thing about the Four of Cups is that I get it with those clarifiers that we had earlier. 
is that the Four of Cups doesn't have much appreciation, okay? Um, and so it's also a card about being in nature. So it may be an indicator to go outside, you know, if it's nice out, take a walk, stand in the sunlight of the spirit, as we say, get yourself connected with the universe in a more fundamental way. And there are answers that will come. There will be guidance that will show up and will lead you to that decision, whatever it is for you. Um, you've got it. You've got it here too, though, with the hanged man. Now the hanged man is like surrender to win. It's really about releasing all resistance. And it's oftentimes associated with the numbers 4, 12, 421. Okay, so it could be something in April coming um, where there's a real change and shift. This is though, you know, relaxed energy. This is not, even though he's got, you know, he's got his, his legs and his arms behind him, it's not necessarily restricted as much as it's him changing how he sees the world. And as Wayne Dyer said, and many teachers have copied him, if you want to change the things around you, you have to change the way you look at the things around you, right? So when you change that, when you change the way you see those things, they will change. And so with this, it's all about through your connection to source, through meditating, through quieting your mind, Whatever spiritual practices feel good to you, Neville Goddard has many teachings, um, and they're they're you know they're old teachings, and they've been doing this for years. I mean, this stuff's been around way before the internet on how to connect to your source and really have everything you want show up, because there's no restriction here. Now, this is also the card of the counselor, the poet, the artist. So somebody here may be doing something in more of a creative fashion, but it makes you feel relaxed. It gives you ease. So the situation that you're entering into, the high priestess, is a card of great potential, but there's it needs the action to, to, take, to take this potential to the next place. Also a card of meditation. Her robe is high vibrational. All the waves indicate vibration. And this gown turns into the pool of consciousness that's featured in the major arcana. So it's like the beginning of the evolution of the soul. It's this place of this calm, intuitive knowing, a knowing and a connection. It's very, it's the card of the psychic also. So for some of you, um, the situation that you're you're dealing with, the, the truth is coming out here. There's something that may have been hidden, um, some elements that may have been hidden that you've suspected. And so you are one of the more psychic signs. So for some of you, You've had this thing where you're not making a choice because you suspect that there's more information. Here's the information being revealed. I also feel like for some of you, you may have uh, a, a love interest that there's something else that they needed to tell you or information about the situation that will allow it to move forward if it's been stuck. Um, but I, again, the, the High Priestess is a card of um, deep spirituality. She holds the laws of the universe, the book of life in her lap, okay? So I, I don't want that to scare you and see it as a negative card at all because it really is about understanding and working with the universe, being balanced with the universe, and that's how life moves forward. So the page of swords is in your hopes and fears here. And so it's kind of, a, it's an immature energy. It can be an energy of communication that's not very, ther it's not very well developed. So again, there's information that's going to come in and some of you may be getting little snippets of it and it's getting frustrating. And so it's related to that high priestess then allowing things to be revealed to you, allowing you to get the answers or the information that you've been seeking. So the King of Pentacles is in the outcome and this is a wonderful card financially. He's the Midas of the tarot. It's really a card of wealth, of security, and a card of making gains and um, financially. So again, if you're waiting on some kind of information, if it's a job or a, you know, the sale of something in the outcome, you end up getting the money. Okay. It's also though a card of someone who's very humble, but a wonderful leader. So it may be you or maybe a person you're attracting who again is not going to, you know, with the high priestess, it's, it's a very slow moving energy, right? It's passive, but um, with this, it may also be connected to this in that it's somebody who really likes to take their time and make things right. Okay. They don't rush to judgment. They don't rush into things. And I don't feel like they're a liar by any means. This is somebody of high integrity. Um, maybe somebody who works in the financial sector in some kind of 
like pharmaceutical sales or some other area that's of course been just blowing up. And so there may be something about that too, where they don't want to start something that they're, they're feeling like is not the right timing because of their job in some way. I do get that. So let's, um, let's see what the angels have to say for you, but you've definitely got developments here, especially if you've been waiting and feeling kind of restless and getting a little bit frustrated by why isn't this happening? Um, as you kind of relax into things and change that perspective, know the universe has perfect timing. Things will show up. All those bridges of incidents showing you, leading you into that manifestation. And we've got here, see what the uh, angels have to say here. All right, you have recovery. So if there's something physically here that does keep coming in, they're telling you there's recovery, all right? And so if you're saying, God dang it, I wish I was the one that had the improvements in the physical body, well, they're telling you it's possible. So don't give up, right? Don't quit five minutes before the miracle happens. Compromise. So again, if there's something about this, if there's a relationship that's held up, there's a little bit of give and take. And we always say the best deals are made when each side leaves something on the table. So there might be something to that. If you believe, so ask, believe, receive, and the universe will bring in gifts. You've got within the next few weeks. So I mentioned April. I do feel like that's going to be an important month for you. And they say don't stop, okay? I'm telling you too. Um, so let's see what Louise has to say here. Louise, hey, I give what I want to receive. We need to give what we want to receive. When you experience any lack in your life, ask yourself, what am I not giving? And it's kind of like how we started off when I say, what do I need to become to, or what do I need to be to have this? It's, it's definitely all up to you, Scorpio. I love you and I'll be back again soon.